All right. Good afternoon or good evening to the select board meeting for Monday, March 22nd, 2021. Reminder that all meetings of the select board are recorded except for our executive sessions. If anyone's recording the meeting, you're more than welcome to do it. If you could please notify the chair and pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law and the governor's March 15th, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the select board will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information and the general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties with a right and or a requirement to attend this meeting can be found on the AG's webpage. The town will persevere to use conference call capabilities regularly for other parties to listen in and participate accordingly. If not possible, we will post on the town's website an audio recording as soon as possible after the meeting. Okay. Uh, present this evening, I see myself, Doug Moglin, Vice Chair, Mr. Didi. Where'd he go? There he is. Russell Fox, Chief Administrative Officer, Carl Steinhardt, and standing in in a guest appearance, Lisa Anderson. Okay, uh, first things first, public comments. Does anyone have anything that they would like to address to the select board at this time? It's Mike, Mike are you, to talk? Are, I don't know, Mike, are you talking or? or... Sorry, I thought I was unmuted already. Um, I don't know if you want to, I, I just wanted to um, discuss with the board um, the, the choice of counsel for the Verizon matter. Um, and I know you guys are discussing an executive session, but I just wanted to offer my, my viewpoint about it because I, you know, um, both as a member of the planning board and as an attorney, I, I do have some pretty specific thoughts on, on it. Um, you know, I've, I've sat down and, and, looked again through all those cases and, and who was involved in them and, um, you know, whether. So hang on one sec. So first, can we get your name and address for the record? You can, Michael Doherty, 16 Lexington Circle. And also chair of the planning board and, and an all around and an all around good guy. So well, I'm going to I'm going to just ask Carl. Carl, is this something that we should address in open session or is this something we should address in exec session or is this something that well, the, 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 the issue you have here, Mr. Chairman, is uh, normally Michael um, recused himself. He would be involved in his capacity as a chairperson of the board that had the appeal. But in light of his um, recusal, I'm not sure that he's not he's acting in a capacity anymore of representing the planning board. Mr. Phelps is actually the highest ranking board member involved in that particular issue. And, um, you know, other than that, Michael would be, would be the designee of the planning board in all other respects. Well, I would only disagree in the sense that my name is as a defendant in a federal lawsuit because of it. So I still, I mean, I do, well, I did recuse myself to the actual vote. I do think I, I have um, some input onto, onto you know, town council in that in that capacity, um, but I could be wrong. Well, then the, the best way that would have to be examined by uh, town council reviewing the matter or the um, ethics commission. Well, I guess my my I, I mean I I guess I don't I, I really don't know what the procedure would be, but I do think it's it, it's appropriate for the planning or for the select board to to take whether it's discussed among the select board in open session or executive session. But, you know, I mean, I think having an um, input into that decision from, you know, myself or, or if there's others, I think is useful. I think my opinion, this should be covered in, as part of executive session under pending litigation and that the chairman could be heard for that portion of which he's concerned. And then we could go on to the rest of executive session, but that's my opinion. Uh, Joe, Russ. I, I concur, Mr. Chairman. Um, 
you know, but to address Carl's issue, uh, maybe Marcus should be involved. Um, I, I don't know, you know. Well, it's one of those issues where if a person's in, on the board and they, and they voted, they casted a vote, they were part of the decision, which is what's under appeal. It's, it has nothing to do with them being on a board, but if they're, if they're part of the board that's on that decision, then that ends up becoming an issue that has to, may have to be resolved by a different third party. But I've never you know, had an issue like this happen before where someone who wanted to recuse themselves and stand down. And of course, Mike, part of this issue was you chaired half of these proceedings too. Right, and I understand that. I'm not trying, I'm just saying that this subject matter is subject to executive session under pending right. litigation and we could discuss the portion of concern and there are there there's other other topics under executive session tonight that obviously Mr. Dougherty wouldn't be part of but for this specific thing I think we could do it and we could certainly also allow vice chairman Phelps as well Mr. I mean the chairman? other thing to keep in mind just yeah. to, I mean just as a procedural matter is that Mark has voted against it right so um um uh, you know I mean I'm not sure if that changes anything either but but at the same time you know, someone who's, you know, it, you have to keep that in mind when when you're when you're talking about his his input on it as well. Understood. So if we listen to Mike on executive tonight, does does his two cents upset the apple cart later that we listen no. to Michael? No, no. An executive, then then let's talk talk to Michael on executive tonight. Okay. I mean, right? It doesn't hurt anything. I mean, I, I, we can sit here for a half hour and debate it, but. Bottom line is Mike wants to get a few things off his chest. He is an attorney by trade, and he knows a hell of a lot more than this guy. Mr. Fox. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, is legal counsel going to take part in tonight's uh, discussion? No, not in, not in that regard. I, th I think the scope of the discussion tonight was very narrow, and yeah. um, I had not invited counsel tonight. Okay, so I, mean, I, Mike, I do don't want... have an issue, Doug. I, don't, I wouldn't have an issue if you talk, check with town council. The only issue becomes is that there's some time sensitivity with this, right? I mean, oh, I get it. No, I, uh, I, I understand. I'm, well, my next question is: Are you available to join us after this meeting briefly? As whenever you need me to, is is fine. Yep. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, we're past public comments. Is there anyone else for public comments this evening? Good, so now we gotta pledge the flag. Lisa, why don't you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of, the United, of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation under, God, under God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty, liberty and justice for all. Okay. First is payables warrant 2123B dated March 8th in the amount of $162,373.65. Acknowledge payroll warrant number 2121 dated 316, 2021 for $230,237.03. And I need a motion for the open and executive session of March 8th, 2021, as well as the budget work session meeting of March 6th, 2021. Joe Didi will make that motion. Russell Fox will second it. Doug Moglin, aye. Joe Didi, aye. Fox, aye. That's unanimous. Approve MOA settlement agreement with the library union local 424. So we need a uh, motion to approve that MOA. Right, and authorize the chair to sign it. Uh -huh. Joe, D will, Joe D will make the motion and for the Russell chair to sign Fox will second that motion. Doug Moglin, aye. Joe D, D aye. Russell Fox, aye. Thank you. Okay. And then we have a agreement with PVPC for fiscal year 2020 CDBG grant admin services. 
Uh, Carl, do you have the dollar amount on that one, or is, is this a general one? Um, I believe it was in there. I know, but I dropped my folder and it went everywhere, so I'm a little out of order. Not going to lie. Uh, uh, no, but it's it's usually in the three to five thousand range, Doug. Joe, you want to make that motion? Joe Didi will make that motion. Uh, Russell Fox will second a motion authorizing the chairman to sign. Good old Foxy. <laughs> Doug Moglin, aye. Joe Didi, aye. Russ Fox, aye. Okay. Uh, CDBG discharge of lien for 46 North Lake. That one I got. Yeah, actually, um, let's go back to that other, um, that authorized that agreement with PVPC, Doug. Let's revisit that for a minute. Revisiting. Okay, that is, is not a monthly invoice. That is the admin. So what happened was you were awarded a grant with the state of Massachusetts. So you uh, um, ended into a grant agreement with the state. That has already been done and signed by the chair. This is now for you to hire the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission to administer the grant. So this isn't like those other little small ones you get. This is like 160 something thousand because this is out of that, that large um, several hundred thousand dollar grant. So this is for the admin services for the entire contract with the regional planning agency to act as our community development department. So I just want to clarify, it's, it's more than a normal monthly invoice. And those were for grants of federal fiscal year 19. This is for federal fiscal year 20. 21. 20, well, no, we're, we're always a year, the feds are always a year behind. How appropriate. Um, so do we want to revisit that motion? And revoke uh, that. You, you can say that you'll you'll hold true to the same motion, or you can re just revote it. Mr. Didi, what's your preference? Uh, we'll hold true to the motion, whatever the Mr. hell. Fox will second that. Doug Moglin, I. Joe Didi, I. Fox, I. And did we ever vote on the discharge of the lien? Oh, I don't think we actually did. So we have a lien, discharge of lien for 46 North Lake Avenue. So I need a motion for the chair to sign that discharge of lien. Joe, do you go make that motion? Mr. Fox will second it. Doug Moglin, aye. Joe Didi, aye. Mr. Fox, aye. Thank you. Carl, review federal COVID-19 stimulus legislation and potential grants. Right, that, that relates to the um, federal um, legislation that was done where there's going to be awards of dollars coming out in the future. And as you know, the, um, there's been some initial articles by the um, MMA in terms of what that means. So this is something that's going to be coming to us in the future, but there's been no um, guidance documents issued by the Secretary of A&F or the Department of Revenue on this yet. But it's something okay. for you to start thinking about according to the um, MMA article that you have in your briefing documents of the types of uses it can be used for. But what, what we are not aware of yet is whether or not it will require any further appropriations at town meeting to expend from these accounts, or if you'll just take the funds in and authorize the expenditures based upon your generic vote at town meeting each year under the housekeeping. Correct. So um, not all of the administrative details have been sent out by those state agencies, but it's something for you to be aware of, the legislation signed, and those funds are gonna become effective at, at a point in time. So the board will be needing to look at what they will want them uh, to be used for within the uh, allowable uses. Okay. Okay. And I believe I, I think I sent you the link yes, that you had yeah, right on the, the yeah. Okay. Can we yeah. make sure that the other, the others get it in their packet so that they know what the, the dollar amounts are and what the, that article was about as to how those monies could potentially be used. Um, it's already, it was in the same, in terms of the dollar amounts that was in your mail packet. Okay. 
I, cause I, I printed it off the, um, the list and it talks about the, uh, the dollar threshold amounts. All right. Oh, you guys have it. All right. So it was, a, it was around 1.8 yes. million, you, right? 1.8. Yeah. So you do have it in your mill. I'm sure I do. 1.8 million. So we'll have to look at that as to where that, if, if that money does come, you know, discuss as a come. board, how it would be allocated. And what years and maybe spread over two fiscal years. Correct. And then the other is from a legal standpoint, we'll probably get direction from, as Carl mentioned, from somebody to say whether our omnibus motion that's made at town meetings that allows the select board to accept all grants covers this monies or it would have to be expenditure authorizations by article at town meeting. Right. Okay. I just want an ambulance. That's all. That'll cover the ambulance. Well, we'll see. Oh, yeah. I, I think at the very least, what what you will end up doing is doing all of your borrowing authorizations through your budget process and be worded in such a way where they can be reduced by the application of, of grants. So that would be the way that bond council would, would word it. Sure. And it'll be same thing if you if you permit a bonding authorization on a dump truck or a water line, any of those things are all gonna have those uh, uh, offsetting language by bond council. Thank you. Uh, I need a motion to authorize the chair and the CAO to approve a sick leave donation to Robert K. Johnson. Joe D. do will make that motion. Fox will second that motion. Doug Mogan, aye. Aye. Trust box aye. And I need a motion to authorize the chair to sign an MOA with the IAFF Local 4919 for EMT weekend coverage. Right. We, we had uh, this issue a while ago and the, M the uh, MOA just came to us for approval from the union. Okay. Joe, do you make that motion? Trust box will second that motion. Doug Mogan, aye. Joe DD, aye. Trust box, aye. Unanimous. And then we need to accept and approve a mass DOR grant of $2,348 for sewer rate relief. That's an annual grant, I believe. Right. Joe DD will make the motion. Trust box will second that motion. Doug Mogan, aye. Joe DD, aye. Trust box, aye. Okay, the next is um, want to have a discussion to see if there's anything that we need to do or can do to facilitate the resumption or if there's anything we even need to do um, for a resumption of outdoor dining and serving for establishments under the existing governor's orders. As the weather turns warmer, um, I expect that some establishments will look to reestablish their outdoor dining that they had uh, last fall prior to uh, winter. And I don't know if the town needs to go back and revisit any of that or if all those permits were granted and are still valid. But obviously, whatever the town can try to do to get out of everybody's way and help them uh, resume those outdoor activities um, to attract business into those establishments in town safely, something we should try to do. So I wanted to carry that here um, in order to make sure that we are doing that and that the relevant, like I know last year, you know, Mr. Didi and Board of Health and Fire, they all went in mass to all these places to you know, give them all the inspections and everything that they needed to get up and running. So if they need to be redone, we should probably redo that. I did reach out to Board of Health today and talk to her. Um, yeah, she's on board, whatever we need to do. I thought there was language at the date. It did have an expiration date, I thought, last year, but I could be wrong. I, I don't honestly recall 100%. Carl, do you recall? Uh, no, but um, what we can do, uh, Mr. Vice Chairman, is we can pull out copies of those documents that were used for those serving establishments, and we can see what action has to be taken to follow up on it. If the board so chooses, last year they designated the Vice Chairman 
to oversee that issue on their behalf, including the issuance of those um, special operating conditions under the governor's order, the board could so choose to um, renew that authorization for this um, spring and, and summer serving season. That's an excellent idea. Mr. Vice Chairman, are you up to the challenge? Yeah, let's just get it done. Yeah, absolutely. Mr. Fox, any objection? Uh, absolutely no objection. Okay, okay, so be clear with a vote of the board that you're authorizing the vice chairman to handle any renewals of those agreements as needed. Russ Fox will make that motion. I'll second the motion. Doug Moglin, aye. Go DDI. Russ Fox, aye. <laughs> Get it in quick. Yeah. All right. Um, I also need one more motion. Oh, we have two more motions. One more motion to authorize the chair and the police chief authorizing a letter to the mass <laughs> office of fishing, fishing boating bo access for North Ramp Boat House easement. Uh, the uh, Chief Bishop Memorial Boathouse will be uh, constructed. They're asking to construct that at the boat ramp so that they can have their boat ready to launch at a moment's notice, right, right on the water. So I have no objection to that, but I figured we'd get a motion from the board to authorize that letter. Will it dub like an ice fishing place for the winter? What, what's the game plan with that shack when it's you know, ice on the ground? Chief Bishop, I know you don't ice fish, but I'm just wondering. Well, again, the thing, when it, I don't think it's going to be about in the water part, Joe. I'm assuming it's oh. going to be type of coverage where the boat is pulled up into it. Um, oh, I got gotcha. you. Know, I was grieving for a minute. Sorry. Yeah, because we're asking for an easement from the state, so I'm assuming that they don't really own the water, so I think it'd be more like where our pumping station is down there. Gotcha. The edge. But um, for the right fee, you know, you could use it if you wanted to during the winter months. We could work out something there. Okay. I appreciate that. And, and just to point of clarification, those are the territorial waters of the Commonwealth that we just spent uh, $800,000 on. So yes, it is their waters, <clears throat> but no, this, the, the ramp would be on, yeah. on the hard pan. So I need a motion for that, please. Joe Didi will make the motion. Russ Fox will second that motion. Doug Moglin, aye. Joe Didi, aye. Russ? Oh, Russ Fox, aye. Thank you. Thank you. And then um, I need a motion to nominate ACO Lizanne Bennett as Inspector of Animals. Joe Didi will make that motion. Russ Fox will second that motion. Doug Moglin, aye. Go DDI. Let's black side. Great. Okay, seeing how it's 535, and I see Mr. Johnson is here. Sorry about that, Chief. Um, yeah, Wick he is. Three, three. He's got the, uh, the Mayflower. Looks like he came on the Mayflower. I was born on the Mayflower, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not touching that one, and Rick. Contrary <laughs> to public opinion, Carl was not actually there. Okay. Uh, WIC 338 2021 schedule. Should the floor I? Or is yours? All right, thank you. Uh, as we all know, uh, our Board of Health uh, went to the, uh, the, De the Department of Energy and, and Environment and got the approval from the state for us to open up this coming weekend. So we then proceeded with the uh, safe to raise key points. And they're basically the same as what we had before following the uh, uh, CDC and the state regulations. The addition is uh, that we're putting in additional staff to monitor it. You know, when we were open last fall, uh, the, the, the mask was not mandatory 100% of the time. It was within six foot range. It's different now. So we have recruited uh, additional representatives to police that because it's a new world. It's something that they haven't gone through yet. That's the, that's the primary change. Um, the schedule itself, uh, the schedule itself is very similar to what it's been in the past. Most of the same racing organizations and, uh, and uh, other venues, some have bailed out, some have gone out of business actually. Uh, the new ones that we have include, uh, we're looking at the possibility of doing some Friday night concerts uh, in addition to the drive-in movie theater, the same basic format um, and this would be for the, uh, the civic fund to benefit the civic fund as the drive-in movies do. 
Uh, we have one other organization, which is the New England Motorcycle Museum out of Connecticut. They do a 500cc shootout. It's really a done for television thing. There are only about 50 people there. It's a tiny event. Uh, New York Off-Road, which is um, where they use a combination of the woods and the track. And then a new one that we're not sure if it's going to happen or not. I spoke to them today, Evently uh, Link. They are a company that that helps the automotive industry promote new products. And um, I think it's Dodge. I'm not sure it may be Jeep, but they're coming out with some new products and they want to have a sandy, hilly area to have consumers come down and take a look at it. And that would be a maximum of about a hundred consumers on any given day going down there to view that. And that's, that's basically, and I think you saw the protocol relative to the drive-in. Um, I think they're very thorough with that. This has been done in Westfield in the past. Um, it would be a combination of a stage away from everybody, as well as the drive-in movie theater doing it on television. And you've sent us the, I saw the schedule in this pile of dates yeah. that you've got scheduled out. Yep. And there is a projected date right now for the national? There is a projected date. Right now we're on the schedule for June 26th. And under the guidance of the state at the moment, that would allow us about 12% uh, uh, attendance. I don't know if that's, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I don't know if that's gonna work or not. We're gonna monitor it. The rest of the, uh, the, rest of the national group are pretty much ready to go. Um, but we're only going to announce the pre-ticket sales for the first three events. I told them that I wasn't ready to yet. I wanted to see how things went first. Um, I think what we would do is we'd be looking at a much, much, much smaller group than we've ever had <clears throat> and probably either eliminating general admission and making it only preferred viewing and VIP or make ridiculously high price tickets that would be the same thing anyway. Um, we have to look at every business model, every financial model to see what might or might not work before we really look at it, look at it too close, uh, uh, too seriously. If we do not have the national, then we would have more of a local Northeast event that would be put together by Keith and myself, not a separate racing organization, but one within the Southwick umbrella only. Okay. Carl, what's next on this? Do we have to vote to adopt the schedule or accept the schedule? Uh, you don't have the schedule. I he, we, It was never sent to us. I thought he was going to put it up on the screen and we would look at dates. I saw it. That on, was, I, that I was saw it the, the other packet. day. That was in the packet I sent you, Carl. Hold, please. Okay. So it's, it's in our packet somewhere? It is. is. Page two. Was it just an email? It was an email that, that had a package of about six pages, a PDF file. And well, I think it was for set up. a while there, Mike, your, your emails were going into the junk email, so we weren't getting them. And of course, I had to mention to you that Cindy wasn't, were you sending stuff to Cindy still? No, no, to Lisa, uh, to Robin, I mean. Okay. And, and I did uh, discuss with Lisa the fact that it was sent and she was following through with Robin to make sure that it was received. Okay, well, it was probably sent to people by email. What we can do is um, we, we can, oh, we, yeah, I'm done looking at it now with Doug. Thank you, Mr. Mulgren. So Thank you very much. I'm, good for, I'm good for something. Yeah. <laughs> now, is this something the board, you know, because we're usually we get this in February is this something, because we have to do a whole license and a permit and all that kind of stuff, and generally the board sends it to the police and fire and the rec center. So are we skipping all of those steps or, or are we just going to just authorize a couple of these events and then get input from those other entities in the meantime? Was that a question to me yeah, or Mr. Me. Johnson or it's a question Mr. to the board Fox. members? Mr. Fox. Mr. Johnson need to know when uh, tonight on this. Because it'd be nice if 
we had this in our hands and we did have a review and, and talk about different things. You know, this is a little hard to read for us older folks because it's smaller. Uh, Rick, do you have to know tonight? I have, I have events with championship points this coming weekend, and I have to pull the trigger tonight on my insurance to cover same. Can we just make a motion to uh, approve uh, the things he needs uh, uh, to get insurance on so that he can begin his operation? That would give us another week to go over this and uh, get input from the police, fire, rec center, and, uh, and, and the board. Uh, Mr. Fox, the, the um, schedule that I sent to the insurance company runs through the month of April, and I told them that's all I was going to ask for at that time until I got approval from you. I'd, I'd make the motion then to uh, approve the events in the month of April, <coughs> and we can uh, take up the other uh, events next week. So that would... Uh, Mr. Fox, would that motion include the NESC event and open practice on the 27th and 28th of March? Correct. Correct. Uh, motion made. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. And it's a roll call vote. Doug Moglin, aye. Mr. Fox, aye. Joe Didi will abstain because he is the civic fund. So the last stuff is me. <laughs> okay. And um, we'll also okay, that's good. that buys us some time now. And uh, Mr. Johnson, please work closely with the uh, our Board of Health and our police department to make sure that you've got everything in place to hold a safe event on all these dates. Please. I will. I will. I'm, I'm in contact with the health department at least twice a week. OK. Um, Carl, I will be. I will be at the track on Wednesday. I could come by with a check for the permit for the entire year at that time, if that works. Sure. All right. And is, is the, do we have our, is everything in place, Carl, with the others? Or was that a one-year deal that was executed last year? It was uh, a three-year three -year deal. Well, I know what, what happened is there's two things here. One is the, one's the permit to allow the WIC to operate at the site. And then um, I'll have to go in and look and see what the permit status is, whether or not that was an annual fee or if you did a multi-year permit. And then there's the lease agreement where I believe you just did a, a one-year agreement with the Legion and it was prorated the board because of COVID, the board gave a discount and allowed it to be prorated. Are you aware of that, Rick? Oh, very aware of it. Yeah, the, he got a break. I got a, I got an increase. <laughs> yeah, I, I have I have the permit in my hand, Carl. It's for three yeah. years. It's for 2020, 21, and 22. Okay, then, then, right. All right, and when you got that permit for those three years, did you make an annual payment or did you make a three-year payment? No, I made the annual payment of $500, reluctantly. Okay. All right, so that's what you're looking to do. And then on the license, because again, we'll have to pull the file. Um, the license issue has to still be resolved um, for anything after July 1st. I mean, I think you're good in terms of what you want to do now for April and May, or sure. March and April, and even May and June. It's a license for 7-1 um, and, and beyond. Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I, yeah we've got... It, Go ahead, I hate Mr. to muddy the waters, and that's, I'm not trying to do that, but I believe I, when I was chairman last year, uh, we were looking for an increase every year on the permits and on the lease. So, uh, but we did give a discount last year. Well, I'll pull the file and look yep. at those things in the meantime. We bought us ourselves a little bit of time here to work through this. So let's yep. let's do our due diligence and get it done so that we can hopefully have a productive and safe season for everybody. The uh, permit states five hundred dollars for last year, a thousand for this year, and fifteen hundred for the year after that. Um, and I believe that's I, correct, Rick. Yep, it's right on the lease, Russ. 
And okay. I, I don't know, I don't have in front of me the, um, the agreement and or discussion relative to uh, the, the Legion's lease of that property. Yeah, it's a license agreement, it's not a lease. Yeah, so right. I, I, don't, I don't have that in front of me. Right, well, we'll pull all that tomorrow. I'll have a check for a thousand dollars there on Wednesday. Okay. Okay. That will thank be, you very much. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Thank you, you Rick. Okay. Under new business, green energy fuel efficient vehicle policy. Yep, Carl? it's it's uh, the program that Mr. Fox uh, has championed. Uh, includes the need to do several things, of course, including a green energy fuel efficient vehicle policy. So you have a copy of what that looks like from the Mass DOER people in the Regional Planning Agency. Okay. So you need to be reviewing that. We did have to send them our fleet schedule so that they could look at it. So that's, this is part of it. And this is this will be a requirement, which will be to adopt the policy. And of course, you'll you'll see that it's going to take you a while to read it because it's a good like ten pages. Okay. Okay. That's not and something believe, we have to adopt. That's part of the town meeting process, right? As part of the green um, energy. Yeah, I'm not sure if this this part requires town meeting. This is a vote by yourself. The stretch code. Um, I believe Doug, you authorized the Mass DOER to come into your April 5th meeting. They're gonna do a 5.30 briefing. And uh, we uh, have invited um, the finance committee, the building inspector and the town planner. And I'm not sure if, if we invited Michael's board, but we did invite Alan. So um, that is gonna be on April 5th. Just for clarification, me. Mr. Chairman, you are correct. Uh, to get the uh, green community designation, it would require a town meeting vote on the stretch code and also uh, 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 a vote on uh, zoning issues. Well, the thing is that I've, I've, I've posed a question to Alan on that. I have not heard back from maybe Mike can help uh, refresh Alan on that issue was whether or not um, solar research and development on in a when one of our zones as a buy right use uh whether or not that's in there because the, the question is whether or not that might meet the requirements of the of that agency and the regional planning agency so i'm, I'm still waiting to hit back from alan on that carl i can just just i mean uh fill you in we had a brief discussion about it the other night but um you know my my very uneducated you know um understanding of it was that having um having the the small arrays be site review only was sufficient to be by right um allowance for solar and uh, and, and and satisfy the green communities um provision but again i could be wrong on that but that was my just looking quickly, you know, on a on a five minute Google search. Uh, right. Is that something you have now in the zoning bylaws that's permitted, or would that require an amendment? The no, the uh, the smaller um, solar arrays are allowed by site plan uh, site review site plan review only uh, in all zones. Okay. All so right. That's a thousand square feet or less. Yep. Yeah, Mike, I, I just want to make sure because Alan missed the uh, the conference call last week and we have it next Monday. So I just want to make sure he gets back to Catherine Rite about that issue. Okay, I'll remind him. She she is the person at the regional planning agency, PVPC. Okay. So that would be appreciated, sir. No problem. All Thank right, you. so we can obviously, Doug, people, the board members can be reviewing this in the meantime. And you can broach this issue when you meet with uh, uh, DOER on the meeting on the 5th of April, okay? Excellent. And, and Mr. Fox will be 
have us all well prepared for that, I am sure. Okay. Um, other new business, Mr. Steinhardt. Uh, yes, I do. I just want to remind you that I've asked the uh, uh, the town accountant to provide available dates so that selectmen can have a budget work session. And I believe um, Laura did offer some dates. One of them has already been taken by the finance committee for uh, Tuesday, March 30th. So that leaves you with Wednesday, the 31st, Thursday, April 1st, Tuesday, the 6th, Wednesday, the 7th, and Thursday, the 8th. And those would have start times of 2.30, 3 o'clock or 3.30, depending upon the board members schedules for their own business commitments. Okay, so guys, do you, can you uh, get back to Carl on your availability? And then we'll work around that. Mr. Chairman. Yes. If we, if we could please do it after uh, the Easter holiday and late in the day as possible, I greatly appreciate it. Absolutely. What, Russ, what day is that? We'd have to be after the 4th of April. Okay, so you're good for the 6th, 7th, or 8th then? Correct. Okay. I don't know about Mr. Didi. We'll just work around Mr. Fox's schedule. We had the national holiday last week, and apparently Easter's an issue too. So whatever works for Fox, we'll definitely jump in. And you're right, I'm busy on Easter too with pies. So let's get past that. And Okay, so so we've, we've narrowed it down to those three days. Uh, what do you think? 3 o'clock start, 3.30, Russ? 3.30 would work better for me. 3.30 would work for me on any of those days. At any of those this time. days? Okay, and you, Joseph? Whatever appeases those two guys. Just got to keep them all happy. Okay, then that's what we'll do. We'll try to firm up one of those days. Since we're going to meet the 5th, then let's think about the 7th or somewhere in there. Sure. Well, you're not, out, you're not doing things two days in a row. Yeah, at our age. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Um, you, know, you might just be old enough to get a shot. Uh, um, any other new business, Mr. Steinhardt? No, that's all I had, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Fox. Mr. Chairman, I have several things. The, the, I'll take the easiest ones first, sir. Uh, April is Donate Life Month, and I'd ask the board to declare it as so and ask that the flags be raised at all public uh, uh, buildings. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I guess we'll have a modified ceremony this year. Last year, I think we skipped the ceremony. So probably I would expect we'll have to do the same this year. All right. So you want to have the donate life flags for the month of April put at all the different buildings, right? Correct. And I'll have to reach out to that. Mr. Didi because my flag is ruined and I don't know if he had some extra new ones or not. Well, let's, we should check our inventory at Town Hall, too. Yeah, and I can make that phone call. Thank okay. Yeah. Um, do we usually change the light, the, uh, light fixture lens colors at Town Hall, too? I, I thought we were doing that for Hope. In, uh, I autism believe month. it's Autism Month also. Okay. Is that the same month, Hope? Yes. Autism month is April and the color is usually blue. Okay. Oh, I, oh so it's not purple? No. Nope. Blue. No, I think purple is childhood cancer or is that gold? Yes. I lose yes. Track. There's so many colors now. Okay, so we're going to do both of those for, for April then. Both questions. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. My second thing, uh, gentlemen, is uh, I've reached out to uh, uh, Bay State Health uh, concerning the closing of their uh, office next to the cottages of Southwick. Um, and we had uh, some discussion. One of their reasons for closing was the lease was up on that building. Uh, also, there, there's concern about uh, our, they're dealing with the shortage of primary care physicians. And they're also their business plan uh, they feel that locating into uh, and consolidating things, they'd be able to offer uh, more services to their clients. And, uh, you know, I, I explained to them that uh, 
for the first time in my life in the town of Southwick, we no longer have a doctor's office. And uh, we, we are a graying community. Uh, we got the American Inn, uh, Rosewood, uh, Winfield, uh, along with the rest of our population. I know Bay State says, well, we're fortunate. We have Noble Hospital and emergency right in Westfield. Uh, they also have offices and uh, other offices in Westfield and, and, uh, and uh, Feeding Hills. But I, I guess what I'd like to throw out and maybe for further discussion, um, if we might want to look into the possibility of reaching out to other uh, entities uh, that might be interested in locating in the town of Southwick uh, to see if, uh, uh, you know, something similar to like what you see like in Huntington where they have a Hilltown uh, 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 facility for many of the towns. I, I don't know, I'm just, just kind of brainstorming here. But I, I think for a community like Southwick, a growing community, uh, uh, it would be nice to have medical facilities uh, offered to uh, people in the town of Southwick. I don't disagree. I mean, they just built that. Um, it, I mean, it's interesting to have a facility right next to the American Inn like that. I believe I was looking at the records. It looks like it somehow shares some ownership with uh, maybe not, but there looked like a related entity to the former owner but uh, I'm not sure. But yeah, I mean, we should probably engage some outreach or maybe even as an economic development activity to, to look at recruiting someone to take that space and use it for its intended purpose. It's a shame to lose that resource in town. Carl, would it be possible to use Pioneer Valley Planning Commission on a technical thing for uh, a few no, hours? You, you have used all of that on the, okay. the green energy uh, Pro, uh, project that you're uh, championing. Okay. Well, why don't we carry that under old business? Because we should strategize on how to do that. Because that is a big loss. I mean, Agawam, you know, the the facility. I know some of the primary cares moved to Agawam, but that's still a bit of a a, a burden, for, especially for you know seniors and those living right in town. That it would be burdensome to get over to Agawam. So. Well, you know, Mr. Chairman, to add to that, I mean, we don't have a bus, bus service here in Southwick, and, and uh, we see that our, we have limited ability with our senior van uh, because of lack of volunteers and things like that. And, uh, you know, this could put more of a strain on our fire department and police department. Absolutely. So, so, so I, Absolutely. I, I agree with you to carry it on an old business and, and see if we can't do some brainstorming and... Uh, uh, see if there's uh, something we can't do. And the next thing I had, Mr. Chairman, and, and because the CAO was not at the budget hearing, uh, which went very smoothly, Mr. Chairman. I, I will. Uh, I, I don't believe how quickly we got through everything. Anyway, I was going to say, and quickly. Hmm. And very quickly. But uh, I believe that uh, former selectman, uh, uh, Mr. Pinnell, talked about the trees at the DPW were intended to grow naturally and not to be sheared. So if we could instruct the CAO to notify our uh, landscaper or the uh, buildings and grounds that those trees uh, should be left natural. Carl, that was part of the special permit decision for the uh, turnkey operation up there. Well, so so the the trees at 661 College Highway are just supposed to grow freely, right? Wildly. So they're supposed to not wildly, but they're supposed to fill in and uh, provide a visual buffer. But they're not supposed to be pruned. They're not supposed to be turned into lollipops. I think they got trimmed last year. I tried telling Art Pinnell that I thought that was Russ Fox's first version of green energy that he's been looking at, but uh, Mr. Pinnell promised me that wasn't the deal. And uh, that's kind of where me and Mr. Pinnell left this. So yes, he would like the trees not trimmed. It's not part of green energy. <laughs> well, Joe did two different things, but yeah. Not with our uh, Pinnell right all, now. No, nope, no. Nope, we're all good. Different. But we're the, good. Uh, and, and the lights on the uh, Memorial snowplow are a spectacular a little touch. Yeah, a spectacular to touch. touch. Yeah. All right, carry on. But they're probably <laughs> solar. So that's green. We got everybody covered. There you okay. go. Okay. The last Mr. thing, Mr. Last thing, Mr. Chairman, 
is I, I'd like to start a discussion on when we will reopen town hall. Uh, I, we, we see what's happening in some of our neighboring communities. I saw some emails going back and forth. Our uh, uh, director of health has been reaching out to other communities to see what they're doing. Uh, our, our good governor is, we're in phase four now. Uh, we see businesses uh, reopening and more people, more people allowed inside. And I'm, I'm not saying we're, we should do it tomorrow. I'm just saying we should start to formulate a plan and have some frank discussions about it. I 100% hey, agree with you. It's actually on my list as well to, to bring up for a discussion as well. Okay. And that's I don't think it, we're Mr. there, Chair. but I think we need to get there. Yep. Mr. Didi. Hey, uh, did you meet with the uh, two lovely gentlemen this week, Mr. Baldiga and the other one? We um, did. Our Westfield guy? We did. All right. So can we draft a letter or something in regards to that dredging and a few other things to go to Richie Neal's office? Correct. I believe both of those guys should, would probably sign them. We shall. Okay. Yeah, that, that came up where they would do that. And then Doug is putting together some items that we talked about that they would want to have input from us about like certain earmarks, like, you know, like equipment and other infrastructure issues. So um, we, we have a preliminary list on that, uh, Mr. Chairman. Okay. That you and I have developed. I, I just didn't, I didn't you're see You're fine tuning that now. Perfect, thank you. And then what did we do with the, uh, with, it's not my retirement, of course, because we're not allowed. But um, are we sending a letter to that retirement deal, just telling them we're not thrilled at all, or want the resignations? Well, that's, that. you, 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 that's under your old business, Joe. Sure. Yeah, I don't read my mail folder, so it's just easier to ask. Yeah, it's under the old business on just what uh, you as a board would like to do, and okay, I'll wait those till materials are in that for you to decide. Okay, great. That's all I got, Doug. Thank you. Okay, and the only thing I wanted to add, uh, Mr. Fox, I was also going to bring up that we want to start discussing what the reopening of town hall fully looks like um, and, and to start working with Board of Health and the relevant stakeholders to make sure that we do that uh, appropriately and, and in a timely manner um, and safely. So let's carry that. Um, and the second thing, it's tied into that a little bit, is I think I'd like to bring back for discussion with the board. Um, the ability for further discussion around adopting the remote participation bylaw so that once the governor's order ends, that we will be able to accommodate the public at least via remote participation. Um, and or if we wanna allow certain members to be able to join meetings remotely at times. That doesn't mean to, you know, we. Previous discussion around this was, you know, hey, we don't want people going to Florida for the winter and just dialing into the meetings. Uh, I think we actually found out that that's not so horrible that if if a, a commissioner or a board member does spend a month or two out of state, that they're able to fully join and participate in a remote meeting. So I think it's worth bringing that topic back up for discussion again and to see if we want to adopt that provision of mass general law to allow it and if maybe discuss with town council to see if when we come back and we're able to provide this service so that members of the public can join a meeting if they want to remotely as to having to come down to town hall in person. So yeah, I if, think, go ahead. I think part of that was we felt they wouldn't have any interest if they were in Florida for a month, but by Zoom in this past year, they still were interested, the guys that went to Florida. So it was nice. They, were, they, were still much, they really did participate quite a bit. I, I was surprised, you know, the, and just as just an anecdotal note on that, I mean, I think through this, we've had excellent participation in meetings by board members. Yeah. You know, even if you're out of town or whatever, you're able to, you know, zoom in or whatever. I'm also, frankly, a little bit disappointed. And I think this is on a symptomatic of everything is how little public participation we've seen of people taking advantage of, of the ability to zoom into a meeting um, without leaving the comfort of your home, um, pandemic or no pandemic, right? Um, so it's gonna really figure out our strategy a little bit going forward. If there's not a lot of value around doing it, maybe we won't continue to you know, provide the access to, to this platform you know, once the, you know, a year from now when this thing is all in the rear view mirror. We'll have to, as a select board, look at that. 
but I just wanted to bring that up here and say we should carry it under old business for you know when we have a work session or you know some other time when we can really discuss it at length. Okay, uh, old business. Uh, DOT, they are working on that bridge in Westfield. Yeah, and that was something that Doug, you and I made that clear to um, to the legislative delegation and the Correct. need to address uh, how that project affects Southwick, especially Sunnyside Road. And we've talked about green energy. We're on track for a uh, special town meeting and annual town meeting warrants. Uh, the warrant articles are due next week. I mean, we already know we're getting four from the planning board. You're probably going to have two or three more. Um, remember last year, you pulled the ones on Revere Road? Yep. Because you weren't sure about finances and all that. So you're going to have those back again. You're going to have several um, of the CPC. Uh, and then when you go through your budget work session on your own and with the finance committee, you're going to make decisions about whether or not you're going to have borrowing authorization articles on uh, the water line um, uh, completion on College Highway, uh, whether or not you're going to need one for roads, whether or not you're going to need one for an ambulance, and whether or not you're going to need one for another dump truck. So you've got different issues that you're going to want to address. Um, so all of those things are going to contribute to what the final warrant is going to look like. Correct. And time is passing quickly, gentlemen, because this is going to have to be addressed because you're, you're going to be signing that, um, you know, a warrant by the end of April for the, the first Monday in uh, May's posting to meet the uh, posting and noticing requirements for posting of warrants. And then you're also going to have your housekeeping one where you have all the different uh, issues related to, like, for instance, uh, you've been authorizing different memorandums of agreements for bargaining units. So some of those are for this year. Uh, that go back to July 1st of last year. So those are retroactive. And some of them are adopted as effective for July 1st next year, depending upon the date of the, their agreements um, expiring. So just be aware, you've got a whole host of different issues coming up with the special and the annual town meeting warrants. Thank you. Uh, regional dispatch. Uh, I attended a Zoom meeting with the Chiefs um, and Westfield last week to further discussions and negotiations regarding a, what a potential regional IMA would look like with the city of Westfield. And we're still plugging away at that. I don't know if the Chief or Chiefs would like to weigh in or add any commentary around that. You know, obviously we we need to continue that discussion um, to make sure that we're doing what's right for both agencies and this more, most importantly, the, the residents of our community. Doug Young, hey. I throw in is just the, the importance of, of it being addressed in a quick manner as quickly as we can, as far as making the final decision, as far as on the IMA, once we get it in our hands, but yep. it is very important as far as the awarding of the grant for us to finally make a decision on which uh, regional center we would want to make that commitment to. Well, yeah, Mr. Ch uh, speaking along those lines, if you're, if you opt for the option with um, Chicopee uh, through Westcom, then that's going to be entrance into an existing governance document that spells all those issues out. If you opt to go to the uh, route with the city of Westfield, then that will be under a standalone. Um, Intermunicipal agreement worked out with um, the city council and mayor and the select board of Southwick. So, correct. So each option has a different document, and each document is a different legal instrument. Correct. Uh, historical commission vacancy. We've appointed one. Did we get any more volunteers yet? Not yet. And they had a bit of an issue with their posting. So they are now meeting on March 31st. Uh, I spoke to Lee Hamburg this afternoon. I, I believe Chief Bishop asked me if he was allowed to be on that and still be chief or would he have to wait until after he retired? Well, 
he's practically historical now, but no, he, he would be eligible now. Are you uh -oh. making that motion or not yet? We're going to wait till after he yeah. retires. We're, we're going to wait. Yeah. Well, okay. So don't you want to make sure before you hire somebody that they're going to be in town to attend the meetings or, or is that why you want to keep the zoom meeting? We're going to have that remote participation thing. We've got this all covered. It's all been yeah, he, planned out. He but can I, phone in from a camper. Yeah. Okay. This summer. Yep. And then um, this is the uh, old business Hampshire County Regional Retirement Board issuing correspondence from other towns. Uh, in our packet, there was some information from a couple letters from other boards of selectmen that are, Carl, if I can characterize them as uh, votes of no confidence of the existing board of directors of the HCRRB. Um, and yes. up for discussion if this, if this select board wants to send a similar strongly worded letter to them as well. Carl, do you sit on that board? No, I do not, Joe. Then I would love to send that letter. Yes, absolutely. That's my opinion. Mr. Fox? Based on the articles that I've seen in the, in the newspaper and based on what I've read, I, I think it raises some very serious ethical issues and i i wonder if uh, they have any credibility whatsoever at this point so i i think it would certainly i'd have to agree with the vice chairman that a, a letter should be sent I, th I think these people should seriously consider stepping down for the good of of, of, of the whole retirement plan so can we uh can we draft that for next week's meeting to be able to send a vote on it next week, Mr. Steinhardt? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I will work on a draft with uh, um, Clerk Fox. Thank you. Excellent. And then uh, note in your mail packet are the amended CPC applications for town hall roof replacement and design per the request of the CPC to take a look at the historical portion of that facility as protecting the historical nature of the facility itself and the historical features that are being preserved by the project. So I, those are in your folder uh, yep. to be reapplied to the CPC. And those that would, that application was already filed and given to all the people that had raised those questions, those issues. And I believe it reflects uh, the feedback provided to your board on the March 10th meeting that you attended. Correct. Great. Thank you for doing that, Carl. You're welcome, sir. Okay. That completes the agenda. Are there any other old business, new business, or discussion items before we move to executive session? And under uh, housekeeping, I'm we are going to roll call into executive session, and I am going to first take Mr. Dougherty for a quick discussion, and then we will move on to the rest of the agenda under exec session. Uh, we'll do the, the labor issues, and then at the at the end, we'll discuss pending litigation again amongst right. the so, board. So those other members later in the agenda, will will they'll go into the waiting room? Correct. So there will be a brief moment when uh, before we admit the chiefs and Ms. Roach. Okay, so motion to go into executive session pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21, 2, and 3, Chapter 214, Section 1B and CMR 20.031B. Labor Council and Fire Command Staff Recollective Bargaining, Police, DPW, Fire, IAFF, Library Units, and Pending Litigation. Move to go into executive session to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel and not reconvene in open session. Move to go into executive session to conduct collective bargaining sessions with non-union personnel and not reconvene in open session. Move to go into executive session to conduct contract negotiations with non-union personnel and not reconvene in open session. Move to go into executive session to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining and the chair declare that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the body and not reconvene an open session and move to go into executive session to discuss strategy with respect to litigation and that the chair declare that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigation position of the body and not reconvene an open session. 
a person shall have a right against unreasonable, substantial, or serious interference with their privacy. The superior court shall have jurisdiction in equity to enforce such right and in connection therewith to award damages. It is a roll call vote. Doug Moglin, aye. Joe Didi, aye. Ghost Fox, aye. Okay. 